Hello YouTube! Today we are going to learn how to unit test components that use the Next.js router. My beautiful header is already using the use router hook from Next.js. If I try to render that component and then run my tests, you will see that my tests will fail with quite a lot of red lines, which is never a good thing. One of those errors is actually very helpful. It says that this use router is returning null. So when we do query or push on null, we see this error on the screen. Now, you might be asking, why is this use router returning null in my unit tests? And when I'm running npm run dev or npm start, my application as the next router. Well, let's go inside the Next.js repository itself to the source code because the source code never lies. So if we go to line 136 of this file, the router.ts file, you will see that the use router is nothing more, nothing less than just exposing the router context from Next.js. And the router context is being initialized on the app component. So over here, this is the app component when you do npm run dev or npm start or any other command to start Next.js. They are setting up on line 618 of this file, the router context provider. So when Next.js is running, you have values when you are testing your components in isolation, because we never set this router context, you don't have anything returned from use router. If you want to go just a little bit deeper, this is the last file, you can see how you can then test that into your components. You can go to the router context.provider and pass any values you want over here. In our case, because I'm using TypeScript, you will be forced to pass every single value that exists for the next router. They are using JavaScript in this specific file, so they don't need to, but I will create an helper for us, so don't worry. Let's go back to our code and at least now you understand why the use router in isolation is returning null. Some people that you will see online will do something like this. They will immediately go and mock the next router and then mock the use router and return any value they want. That's also valid. That's nothing wrong with that approach. I just think it's not as clear for us to then read our tests and understand which value is being assigned to each test because if in the first test I want ASD to be 4 and in the second test to be 5, is not as clear as with the way we are going to do and also Next.js is doing in their own repository. The first thing that I'm going to do is that function to return all the possible properties from the Next.js router. So I will go to the source and I will create a new file inside test utils folder and I will call it create mock router, okay, .ts. And what we are going to do is the following export function create mock router. And over here, we will receive a router. And this router is the next router. And we need this next router to just be partial because I want you to be able to only pass one property. And this create mock router returns a full router. And TypeScript already allows us to do that. So partial new router. If you are not using TypeScript, you don't need to define this bit over there, but the rest is exactly the same. So we now need to do the following return and we will return a next router. Okay. So we are going to return the next router. When we do that, we will immediately have autocomplete for all of these properties. So I can do query, which will be an empty object. Then I can do, for example, is fallback to be false. And if we are doing, for example, a method like back, we will just do just.fn and any other method you just do just.fn and at the end i will then just pause the video to copy the full list at the end you will just do dot router so any values that you are passing over here you will override the default ones let me just use the magic of video editing to put all the values there. Now, with the magic of video editing, we already have all the properties and functions from the Next.js router, and we are still able to override the defaults if we want to. So we can go to our main component, and now we will start to use the router context.provider value equals to create mock router. We will pass an empty object for now, and then 
we will just paste our beautiful header inside the router context. We need to close the parentheses. And if I try to now import this one, you will see that VS Code is not helping me out. If you are lucky enough, nice, but the import is this one over here. This is the import for Next 12. If you are still using Next 11, this is the import somewhere here on the screen that you need to use, and they are slightly different. Next.js reserves the right to change this at any time because this is not public API, at least not yet when I'm recording this video, okay? So they can change that uh, import anytime they want to. That being said, we can now open our um, our terminal and run the tests just to make sure that our test at least is no longer exploding. And as you can see, my test is no longer exploding. So I can come over here and do the proper test now, because what we need to see is to do to have an ID of 22. And in order to do that, we can go inside our code and we have this use router, the query and the to do ID will be based on that query ID. So we are lucky that we allowed us to overwrite parameters so we can do query ID 22. And you might be asking why I'm passing the query as a string and not a number, because the query parameters are only strings or arrays of strings. So in this case, it can't be the number 22. It needs to be the string 22. And it will be to do ID 22 to be in the document. We just need to import the screen from React testing library. And if we run our tests again, our first test is not only passing, but is passing with the stuff that we want it to pass. Now we can start to go to the second test, which is a bit trickier than the first one, because we have more properties. We will have the query ID and the path name, and we are using the link from Next.js. So in the end, what we expect to be rendered will be an anchor tag with a proper URL over there. So I will even copy this one because it will be useful for us. And I will just comment this over here for us to see the URL while we are creating the test. And now what we can do is slightly copy that one. And over here, we will do the following. The query ID, we can pass a different number just to be different. And then we can pass, oops, we can pass the path name to be Bruno, for example, right? And so we will expect that this URL will be 33 and the path name will be Bruno, right? So let's see if that's what we are getting. So we will do screen dot get by text and we can say to have an attribute of href and the href will be this specific one over there, right? So I will do that. And hopefully we will have another test passing. And this one is actually not passing. So we can see why. As an anchor tag with href equals to context. And the error was because this was expecting to receive an ID equals to 33 from Bruno. And we received something else. Isn't it exactly? Ah, we forgot the slash over here. Well, my bad. Now it's going to pass the test. So that test is also passing. You can see that check mark over there. For our last test, what we want to do is to click on this sum action over here. And then after we click there, let's say that we do some actions in our application, for example, a checkout or something like that. And after the checkout is finalized, you redirect your user to some other page. This is that type of scenario where we are calling the push over here. And so what can we do in order to test this? We can click on the sum action and then make sure that the push, the router.push has been called with this value over here, right? And this one even has the base path and the path name. So we have more stuff to do in this one. Let's copy this render first. This is the first thing we are going to do. And after we render, we can do the following. We can do fire event fire event dot click screen dot get by and this time we can do the rule to do it properly and we will have name and i think it's called some action yes it's called some action so let's copy that one over here we click the button and we need to make sure that whatever value we have over here 
we will get the push from there. So let's do this in a slightly different way this time because we want to make sure that one of those functions has been called. So let's do const router equals to that bit and we will pass the router over there. So the only thing we need to do now is to expect our router dot push to have been called with and it will be very similar to this one. We just have one more thing right now, which will be the something. Good job, Bruno, naming stuff. I'm probably the worst person in the world naming stuff. <laughs> so this one we will do, for example, Antunes, which is my last name, right? And that value will be the base path. So we can go over here, pass a base path, and the base path will be Antunes. We can even say this one will be João, just for you to see that's completely different stuff to make sure that we don't have anything cached or anything weird like that. And now we have probably something over here saying an unsafe call of any. OK, for now, we will not pay attention to ESLint and I can do npm test. And if everything goes well, our test will be called and cannot find name fire event. OK, let's see. Let's do fire event. Now it will find that name. So actually it was not ESLint, my bad. We can now run that test and you will see that we have now our three tests passing. Now, one thing that people ask me quite a lot is when we create a test, for example, let's say that I will create a contacts.spec.tsx. I will have the context test as close as possible to my page context file. And if we now go to my application and I go to contacts, I have this page. But if I go to contacts.spec, I have a page that is failing. Instead of receiving a 404, like if I do, for example, contacts ASD, I receive a 404. If for whatever reason I do contacts.spec, I will receive an error because Next.js, every file that is inside the pages component will open as a route. So how can we fix that? Well, we can go to Google and type Next.js page extensions. And when we open that file, you will see that by default, the page extensions have these uh, extensions, but we can change these extensions to be, for example, page.tsx or any name you want.tsx in that case, right? In my case, I will just go to the next config.js file and I don't need any of those because I only use .tsx files. If you use any of those, you can use the other ones. And we can even ch change these to youtube.tsx any name you want to, and I will change to youtube.tsx just to show you. So if we go, if you go now over here and I rename this file to be .youtube.tsx, this file to be .youtube.tsx, the context is the same. This one will be .youtube.tsx, and this index will be .youtube.tsx, right? If I save that one, I'm not sure if I need to stop the server or not, but let's stop the server because it's just very fast to restart the server. So no need to risk anything. And when I come over here and I go to contacts, contacts is still working. But if I do contacts.spec, this one now returns 404. So you can now safely go to any test that you want inside your pages folder, create a .spec.tsx, and you don't need to worry about that opening a route for your users. Just keep in mind that this name can be as short as .p.tsx. You don't need to put .page.tsx. And as you saw, you can even call it youtube.tsx. Now, if you like this video, if you found any value on it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see all the videos in this playlist, you can click over there. And please let me know if there is anything you want to see about React testing, any specific topic, and I will try to cover. Thank you. Bye-bye.